Uh, I'm Sasan Rasmukha from now from Top University. At the time when I submit this abstract, I was at France CNRS. Uh, now I'm in Top actually. So my talk is about uh, SFQ-based pulse amplifiers that we are working on this multi-chip model for. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. We we are working on this multi-chip model for the expanding the possibilities of superconductor circuits with combining it with CMOS and probably in future other technologies like quantum computing. Uh, first of all, I will talk about what's the meaning of the high frequency in superconductor circuits. When we talk about high frequency in superconductor, it's a little bit different than what we talk about when we, we are discussing CMOS, which is um, basically in superconductor, it's when we are sub terahertz, we call it high frequency. Then uh, I will show you the, how we model the pulse propagation in superconductor strip lines and coplanars and transmission lines. And then uh, the digital amplifier and how we use these models to make uh, pulses go from one chip to another without losing any data. Uh, I think you are familiar with this model. It's the uh, infamous matisse bardin equation that we use for calculating surface impedance of the superconductors in higher frequencies. This is the estimation done by Mazin. And uh, with this estimation, we calculate the surface impedance of our niobium films that we are using for making superconductor integrated circuits. This two sigmas, then using these uh, sigmas that we get from the equation and from our technology, we have simulated a, a strip line like this. And this is the results for the, impedan uh, for the impedance and resistance and inductance of it, which shows us the losses. These uh, calculations and simulations is done by our colleagues in South Africa, in Estelenbosch University. Also, we have done some calculations on superconductor digital circuits, like uh, this is the SFQ TFF circuit, which is made by STP2 technology, which is uh, a technology done in Tokyo AAST, Gravity. This is not a very fast technology. The film current, critical current is about 2.5 kiloamp. So it's not a very, no, it's not a very fast technology, but as you can see, I think you are familiar with these models, so I will not go long about this. But uh, these are the basically the models that we use for transmission lines. This is for the lossless models. We use just L and C and mm, the Pi model and the ladder. Then if you have a lossy transmission lines, which at the higher frequencies in superconductor, we get these lossy transmission lines from matisse bardin equations. We get these uh, resistors and uh, the, these impedances. We can model the, our trans. These are the definitions I probably use in the presentation, like group delay and wave velocity and characteristic impedance, which uh, I think you're familiar with. So <laughs> this is the uh, strip line that we model in the 150 micrometer strip line we model in the electromagnetic simulation software sonnet. As you see, the frequency of the superconductor, uh, the impedance of superconductor and the group delay is very dependent on the frequency. So when we modeling a pulse for the digital circuits, we should consider this when we send it the pulse for longer distances. <laughs> And uh, 
we solved the equation for the strip lines. The, this is the analytical solution that we get from the solving the micro strip line that we use mostly for the transmission lines in the digital circuits, in superconductor digital circuits. And this work was done mostly by Professor Febre. The coplanar, we also calculate the coplanar impedances for superconductors. Uh, the difference between a strip line and coplanar, uh, of course, you know that the energy in a strip line is between these two planes, uh, the ground plane and the, um, this is the ground plane and this is our line. And for the coplanar, the energy is in the gaps. And since the capacitance, Uh, also, of course, this is the solution. This is the simple solution for the coplanar line, but we have made a newer solution with geometric parameters that we discussed this in ISEC 2019 conference. And this is the result we get from the analytical solution from calculation with sonnet simulations and from calculation with indexes. So we see very good match between our calculations and uh, other simulations. And uh, this is the pulse propagation in a strip line or in, in a superconductor line. And as you can see, the pulse shape changes drastically as it moves along in the line. So we also need to consider this change in shape when we designing digital circuits. No. Uh, these are just basically the previous works that we done on the strip lines and coplanar lines for connections between the superconductor circuits. And after that, we needed to design an amplifier to amplify this pulse and correct the shape of the pulses when we send them for the long distances or when we want to read out and integrate this chip with the CMOS chips. So the way we go about this is we basically need to increase the energy of the pulse at first. And this was done by a series of splitter circuits. And after that, these splitter circuits were fit to a modified SFQ to DC converter, which the SFQ DC converter, as you know, at the last stage, they had an squid loop, which gives us the digital output at the oscillation. Then we match these squid loops with another series squid circuit, uh, squid circuits, and when we make these uh, at the right frequency, uh, at the right uh, match, and we bias them with the right amount, we can get uh, the we can basically add these pulses energies to one big pulse or one big DC output. This was the basis of the our amplifier that we designed. And we have since then, since I give this abstract, we have published this in 2021 at the I think at January, this circuit. So this is the quantum accurate amplifier simulation results. As you can see, the number of stages means the number of squeeze that we put. As you can see, when you put more squeeze, you need you get more space in the circuits and need more bias, but you also get higher gain. So for two squeeze, this is also again STP technology. So with high HSTP technology or ADP or new Lincoln Lab process, the amount the value for the pulses that you get is twice or three times bigger than this. So with this amplifier, you can get three times more voltage with those technology. But here, let's say for two stage, at, when we have the pulses at 0 0.400 micro, microvolt, with two stages, we get the DC amount of 300 microvolt, and with four stages, about 600 microvolts. And we can increase the number of stages as we increase the number of stages, we get much more gain. About uh, We can get about 2.5 or 3 millivolts with 16 stages. 
But here's the catch. If you increase your gain and increase the number of amplifiers, you will also lose some bandwidth. So you should consider that for your circuits too. This is the fabricated circuit. The fabrication was done in Tokyo Gravity AIST. And uh, it's the size of the four stage amplifier. As you can see, it's not a very a small compared to CMOS technology, but well, it's really good for RSFQ. These are basically S3 uh, splitters that we use for increasing the energy of or number of our pulses, then fed to a modified DC, SFQ DC stage. And after that, we have our stack of squids, which is matched with these squids inside SFQ DC. This is our measurement setup at Tobe University, which we modified for precision measurements. And you can see there is different types of cables that goes to the cold head and it's in the RF cage. So we can do very precise and low noise measurements with this system at 4K. It's the pulse tube system, which damps the vibrations. And so it's very good for precise and low noise measurements. For this measurement, we just need to apply a clock frequency or input to the uh, to this input stage of our amplifier. Then it's our circuits. And then uh, with amplification of pulse, we see uh, we also need some uh, CMOS amplifiers to see it on the scope. And after measuring, this is our measurement results. This for two stage and four stage. As you can see, it's a very good match with simulations of two states and four states. Okay. We also calculate the bit error rate of these uh, amplifiers. This is the simulations of the bit error rate based on the bias that we give to, uh, sorry, I show this bias that we give to squids. As you know, squids are very sensitive to the bias and outside magnetic field. So to optimize them for best work, we need to make the bias margin larger. But since the bias is independent and we apply it on, like analogly, not the, it's not dependent on anything. So we can give a very precise bias and as you can see in simulations, we have about minus plus minus 2% of the margin on this bias. And this is the measurement of the same bias that we even get some better results in the measurements. So we have about plus minus 2.5% of margin. Now, I talked about this band, losing bandwidth at with, as we increase the gain of the stages. Uh, so we simulated these amplifiers in different stages, these two to 16 stages. That 16 stage is the number of stages. Then uh, the sides, and uh, like this, we can first solve the problem with the memory in superconductor circuits. Since you know the in superconductor electronics, the memory is, is 